Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Rafael Hoda from Curly Brackets, and this is going to be a Project Sunday event. And so we're going to be building a full project from scratch. And so we're gonna I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, uh, what we're going to be building very soon. Just uh, I want to let everyone know that we have Kabir, Lily Jane, Ludda, and Taro Dorex in with me here now. So they're also going to be participating with me. And so I'm going to be asking them some questions and they're going to be, you know, giving their opinion and asking some questions also along the way. So let's see if I can uh, um, just mute my phone so we don't get um, uh, disturbed by that. Let's begin. So Today, we're going to be building a website that is going to be an interactive website, which means that you'll be able to interact with the website, clicking a button so that something happens. And so today we'll be building something that changes the background color of the website in different ways. So let's get right into it. So first thing I want to do is open up something called Figma. If you haven't heard about Figma before, it's a really amazing app, which is completely free to use actually, that lets you put down your thoughts before you start working on a project. So if you're someone who wants to code something, a game or a website or something like that, you might have some ideas in your head and you might want to go right into coding it right away, opening up the coding program and then you start coding. In my opinion, that's not the best way to do it because even though you have some idea of how it should be, it's always good to just put your thoughts down on paper, right? That's what people say. But Figma is actually a digital version of that. Let me uh, show you what I mean. So let's just call this thing, uh, let's actually make this a little bit larger so you can see it better. Let's zoom in a couple of times. There we go. So uh, let me, that's, that's a little bit too much. There we go. So first I want to just make it, um, give it a different name. So let's do color changing uh, website. And I'm going to go up here and start with a frame. So a frame is kind of a, you know, a, a canvas or a place where you can actually start putting things down. So I'm going to go with a desktop canvas or desktop frame rather. And I'm going to just keep it really, really simple. So the easiest way that I think that uh, people can interact with a website using a button. So let's just make a very simple version, uh, which is just going to be one button that when you click it, it changes the background to a different uh, color. So but let's let's try to make it kind of nice, you know, nice looking. So let me uh, what, what which color should I use guys for the button? Any ideas? Blue? Blue? Blue, red. Okay, I'll I'll go with blue because Lily Jane uh, said it first, and then let's make a hover effect so that it goes to red when you hover over it. So let's do kind of a blue like this. I think that looks pretty nice. And then let's uh, give it a little bit of like rounded corners because I think that looks quite nice. So I'm gonna give it a ten up here. Up here, I'm gonna do ten pixels, so it kind of gives it that nice rounded uh, shape, and then. Let's do, um, let's do uh, blue. Let's just write the name and then we'll go here. So let me just move myself a little bit to the left side so you can see what's going on here. Let's increase the font size. And then of course we can also change it, but let's not worry about changing the font just yet. There we go. So we got a nice uh, blue um, um, button. And so let's make it so that let's create a new frame. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this frame. So let's duplicate this frame like this. And then now let's change the background color of this thing to the um, background of this uh, button. And so what I want to do here is, let's see here. So if we do, uh, let's go down here. Let's make it into a group. Let's do group selection. And then can we make it, uh, let's go into prototype mode up here. There's a design mode. There's a prototype mode up here. When you go into prototype mode, it's going to give you this little uh, circle. 
So you can literally take that circle and drag it to the different frame right here. When you stick it to that, you can choose on click. If you click this thing, it's going to go to this, um, this frame. So now when I play this uh, little sketch up here, let's see. And then if I click it, it actually changes it there. So now we got a pretty good idea of what type of website we want to make or how it's going to look. And now we can just turn it into code. So let's go with this for now. And then we can come back to the sketch and change it later if we if we want to do something more later on. All right, so we got the Figma sketch ready. Now I'm going to go into Replit to code there. If you are watching this and you don't like Replit, you haven't used it before, or you want to use something else, it's completely fine. You can also use VS Code or any other code editor if you want. All I'm going to do is make a website that uses HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And the reason I'm using Replit is because it's the easiest way to do it. So let's go here and make it a little bit larger. And I'm going to open up a new project here. Replit, by the way, is completely free to, uh, to use. So you can sign up using Gmail or any other thing, and you can start using it. It's pretty easy. So uh, press uh, a plus there. Let's go with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And then let's call it color change website. Here we go. So now um, let me just change one little thing because I know if you're trying it for the first time, it's going to look a little bit different for you. There you go. So when you open up a new project in REPL, it's going to it's going to look pretty much exactly like this. And so you got a couple of different windows uh, here. You got your code in the middle here. So it's already gone ahead and given you some code. So you don't got to write that boring boilerplate code that you have to do with every single website. It already gives you that. And then it also uh, created two other files for you, a JavaScript file and a CSS file that are also connected with the website here. If you can see here, it says it references those two files. So those are already connected. The reason it does that is once you get started right away. Um, and on the left side, obviously, you got all your different files. There's also some settings on the left side. So if you want to change some of those, you can go into settings. And then you can, for example, change it so that you see your preview of India window and this thing, uh, which I'm going to tell you about a little bit later um, uh, on the right side. Or you can make it stacked like this. And then you also can choose between a dark theme and a light theme. So what do you think, guys? Should we go for a dark or light? Dark? Um, dark. Okay. All right, we'll stick with a dark one. I also like dark. That's my favorite. So uh, other things we have here is font size and some other things. Um, we can leave that as it is right now. And then if you want to hide this thing away, you can just press uh, the buttons to kind of toggle it. Also, could I have uh, everyone in uh, the, the Zoom meeting to mute themselves if they're not talking? Thank you very much. So let's just write the very simplest website code so that we can see that everything is working. So this is the window on the right side where we can be able to preview our code. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So it's easier for you guys to see actually zoom in with my There we go. And so if you haven't seen HTML before, HTML is a coding language that lets you make websites. And there are several languages that go into making website. We're going to see all three of those in this video. But HTML is the most basic one. And HTML is the one that lets you put in the content of your website and also the structure of it. Here's what it means. So let me go inside of the body tag here. The body tag is where all of your website stuff is going to live. The things that you can see when you open up the website. So I'm going to go inside of this tag. I'm going to press enter and I'm going to write an H1 tag. And then I'm going to say, um, let me just say the most kind of boring unoriginal thing when you're starting off a new pro project, hello world. And then I'm going to close this tag using this. So this is the most important thing to understand about HTML is that it's all tags. So anything you want to put in the website, 
you enclose it with tags. So what I've done here is I've created an H1 tag that starts and then it has the content in inside of it and then it ends like this. And the only difference between these two are is this slash at the end. So now if I go out here and if I run the code, you'll see that I now have a website that says hello world. Okay, so I'm gonna be going between coding and actually seeing the website a lot. And I wanna make it easier for you to see and watch this video and gonna go through the code yourself. So I'm gonna open this thing up in a new tab. So up here on the right side, you'll see open in a new tab icon. Let's open this up and have it in a brand new tab, the preview of the website. Let's go back to the coding and then I'm gonna just make it smaller and then zoom in on this. Here we go. Okay, so let me just give you a very basic introduction to uh, HTML. So HTML has a lot of different tags. So it also has an H2 tag. Let's see, uh, let's say goodbye world. And then we'll close that too, H2. Let's go here and then refresh to see. There you go. You have a heading that's slightly smaller than the H1 tag. Now, similarly, you got H1, H2, H3, H4, and H5 is the last one. Now, you also have another tab uh, tag that's called the paragraph tag. Starts with a P, or it's just a P. So in here, you can say, um, my name is Rafid, and I work at curly brackets. This is going to give you this type of text. Zoom in a little bit so you can see better. There we go. So this is what I meant when I meant structure and content of the website. There's no colors involved. There's no you know pretty pictures involved or anything like that. It's just the content. Now, let me show you two more things that you can do in here with HTML. So one thing that is really, really cool with websites is that you can link websites together. So let's try to create a link. So I'm going to make a link to the curly brackets website. Let's go after this one and let's write a link tag. And that's an H, uh, an A, sorry, uh, anchor tag. And then it has this kind of weird href equals um, quotation marks. All that means is, is that you can put a link in here that the user is going to be sent to when they click something, when they click a piece of text. So here I want to give the full URL of curly brackets. That's going to be the entire one. So it's not good enough just to say curly brackets.no. Unfortunately, that's not going to work. So what is what do you guys think is the full URL to a website? Where does that start? There you go, Kabir. Good. HTTPS. HTTPS uh, colon slash slash www.curlybrackets.no. Now it should work. So once I've done that, I can close this starting tag because I have all the information that I need now in here. Now inside of here, I'm going to actually write the name of our company, Curly Brackets. That's going to be the thing that can be clicked. And then we're going to close this with an a tag so now when we go here and we refresh you'll now see that there is a little link here and when you click it it takes you to our website very cool let's go back anything else that we should be able to do using html yeah how do you make the link not blue how do you make the link not blue not underlined. Very good. Uh, very good question. That is where CSS comes in, which is the other coding language that goes into making websites. I'm going to come to that very soon, but very good uh, question, uh, Luda. It's like you need to make a style and then no underline. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. Yes, I'm, I'm going to show you exactly how to customize it exactly as you want. And is exactly right. It comes into style. So you can write something style equals to do it. We're also going to see a much better way to do it very soon. 
Um, another thing that you can do here, of course, is that you can put in an image. So let's go into uh, Google and just find a kind of a cool image that we can put in here. Let's say um, any uh, cool GIF animations that I can get. Do you guys have any ideas about like a nice GIF that we can put in? Just uh, either say it or put it in the chat if you have any ideas. Let me see. Um, uh, I think there's one that I like a lot is uh, uh, Toy Story uh, Woody GIF. I think this one. Yeah, this one I like. Um, it's from Toy Story 2. So if you found an image, and it could be a GIF animation, it could be JPEG, PNG, whatever type of image. In order to put it on your website, all you need is to give your website the address of that image. And what that means is where is that image located? Now there are two options there. You could either have the image in your folder that you have uploaded uh, you know, to your website. In that case, you need to save the image and put it in the folder, or you can use something that already exists on the web and just reference to that. That's what I'm gonna do in this one. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna right click and go to copy image address. That's gonna give me a whole full URL for this thing. There you go, it's working. And I'm gonna literally just copy that, go in here, and then underneath this thing, I'm gonna do an image tag. And I'm gonna do SRC like this. And then let's close that. So SRC stands for source. So let's put in the source for this image like this. Now an image tag is, let me just scroll up a little bit so you guys can see. An image tag is a special tag because it's a self-closing tag. So you don't actually need to put like a closing tag with like a slash IMG at the end. There are some tags that are like that. So let's see now. Let's see if you can refresh this. And there we go. We got an image right here. Now, there is a little bit of a problem, right? I don't really want the image and the curly brackets thing to be on the same line. I want those to be on a separate line. So let's see how we can do that using this uh, tag, which is called a break tag. So let me just put in here, BR, short for break. Let's go back here, refresh. Now you'll see that there is one new line here. And you know what? You can actually just keep adding these as many as you want. And it's just gonna give you that many lines underneath it like this. So one thing you gotta realize now is that just because in your code, you put something on a separate line doesn't mean that that's gonna translate to what you see in the browser. It doesn't work that way. So you gotta kind of explicitly say, uh, tell it to do that. So I actually only want one of these like that. So let's remove those. Now let's come back to the question that Luda had, uh, which was about how to change the uh, colors uh, and how you can like remove the underline from this thing. Let me actually give it one more break. Can, so you, can you also show how to uh, put in a downloaded image? How to put in a downloaded image? Sure, I can, I can show you that. So uh, let's, uh, let's save this image on my computer. So let's right click, save image. So let me just put it on my desktop and let's just call it Woody, GIF like that. Okay, so now I have it saved on my machine. Now, if you're using VS Code or something like that, all you gotta do is take this image and put it in the folder where you have your uh, website. So on Replit, it's gonna be something like this. Let me zoom out a little bit here and I gotta put it right here. So I'm gonna show this thing in Finder and then I'm gonna move over this. I'm literally gonna drag and drop it right here. So now it's in the same folder as all of my other files. Once that is done, we can again zoom in here and let's get rid of this. I don't. And then instead of this big thing, we can just change that to woody.gif, which is uh, here. There we go. So now that should also work. Refresh, and there you go. The 
uh, image still is working. And to tell you the truth, this is the best way of doing it. That way you're sure, right? Because someone else's website could go down at any time. This is the best way to do that. Okay, so now let's see how we can um, change things on the website and look them, make them look prettier with different colors and that kind of stuff. This is where we're going to be leaving HTML and going into CSS, which does all of those things. So let me first show you a little bit of a messy way on how to do this. So let's go in here and let's go into this tag right here this link tag that creates that we can go in here and we can say style equals again quotation marks and in here we can say color let's make that i don't know red now if we go here and we refresh we'll see that the link now changes to red so all you're doing now is that you're giving instructions that, you know, take the font color and then change it to something else. You can also do other things like you can say font size and you can change that. So if you wanted it to, to be much bigger, you could change that as well. Now, one thing that you uh, have to notice is that for each instruction that you give it, you have to separate it by a semicolon like that because you know that's the way that you're telling CSS that I'm done with this thing now here's another instruction uh, another thing that we can do here is also we can put the um, we can put this uh, text in the center instead of on the left side so now if we refresh it should be put in the center let's see if we can wait what's happening here text align center why is that not working uh, text align center this is for some weird reason not working let me just see what's going on here uh, font size text align uh, let me actually get rid of that maybe that's something with the link here that I'm going wrong at let me try to do it to this instead so let's leave this for now and let's try to put style in here. Let's do text align center like this. Now refresh and that works. Okay, so there's also something here that happened with the link. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but normally if you have a tag, you can align it to the center by saying text align center if it's only text that you're working with. Now, you also said, Elida, if you can take away the underline, right? You don't want it to be decorated with this underline here. Yeah. Yeah. So let me actually now use Google on how I can actually search for that. Because if you're, especially if you're new to this thing, you're not going to remember most of these things, right? But there's a very easy way to just find out exactly what you need using Google. So we open up a new tag and let's do, um, how to remove underline from link. Let's see. CSS styling links, it says, okay. Okay, the text decoration property is mostly used to remove underlines from links. That's exactly what I want. So it says here, text decoration none or underline. So I'm gonna take this one and copy it and you put can it also do like uh, fast text can't you what like make, make the text fast or oh yeah yeah you can do that too definitely but let's try this for now and then i'll show you how to do that too now you can take away that so the whole thing here is that you can put whatever style you want in the tag like this now this is not the best way to do this, unfortunately. This is not the best way to do it. The reason is because it's getting really, really messy, right? Because you got an HTML tag and then you got CSS in here. It's best to keep those two things completely separate. So let's try to do that now. So let's go onto the left side here into our files and see the style.css file? This is the file where we're going to put all of our CSS in. So let me just open up this file in new tab up here and put it up here. And then we're gonna just write it in here. So let's go here. 
And what I want to do now is I want to give some style to the H1 tag right here and not do it here. So I got to be able to have a way to tell this file to know how to give the right styling to the right tag. Hmm. Okay. So then I need to create a link between those two. This is where classes come in. So let me show you how we can do that. Let's copy this part, copy that, get rid of this from here. I'm gonna go back to just it being a normal H1 tag. And now I'm gonna do this, space class. Now a class is something that you can come up with yourself. This is you, you can come up with whatever name. Remember, don't put any spaces on some classes though. You just want to keep it one word. If you want to keep it more words, just use, you know, dashes to separate them. So I'm going to call this title. Now, once I have this, I can go into my CSS and I can say dot title. So now I'm saying do these things to the title class. And in order to be able to put my everything in there, I need to put curly brackets because I need to be able to say this is the block that you should do something with starting curly bracket, ending curly bracket. So in here, I can um, paste in what I copied, the style that I copied, and then I put a semicolon at the end, and now it should be able to work. So now if we go here, and then we go back to the website, it should still be in the center, which it indeed is. So let's now try to do some other things to this thing. Let's go a little bit to the left here. Let's do font size, make it larger. Uh, maybe 45 pixels here as well. Let's see. It's going to be much bigger. Let me zoom out a little bit again because we're working with pretty big text now. There we go. That's better. And then now in here, we can also do color. Now, colors are interesting because if you're using REPL, uh, Replit, it's going to give you this drop down of many, many different colors that come built in. So you could go with something like, I don't know, uh, let's do blue. And that's going to work. But if you want a very specific color, like specific shade of blue or pink or whatever, then you can't do it by just writing it down as this, then you need the specific color code for that. So for that, we can go into Google and we can go for color picker. And Google actually gives you an easy way to do that. It's going to give you this color picker. So just pick the one that you want. Let's go with maybe like bluish. In here, you got a whole bunch of different representations of that color. And I'm just going to go with the easiest one with just the hex code. So just copy this. Go back here. And then instead of this, I'm going to paste in this code. And then refresh. Now we got the exact color that we want. Okay, so that is CSS. Now, uh, let me clean up this website a little bit because we didn't want to make a website like this, right? This was just to show you guys how HTML and CSS works. Now, one more thing, though, that I'm going to show you uh, is if you want to be able to change the color of the background, you can target the body. So if we go back to index, see everything that is on the website is between these body tags, everything in here. So if we say make the body background color, not white, which is the default, but make it something else, that should work. Let's go here and we'll go in here and we'll say body, curl your brackets, and then we'll say background color. And then let's do, which one should I do? Um, let's see, maybe gold, let's try gold and then refresh. There you go. Now the background color is gold. Now, one thing you'll notice is that why is there a little dot here and why is there no dot here? Well, the reason is for all inbuilt tags, like the body tag, you don't need to put a dot there. But if it's a class that you have created yourself, then you need to tell CSS and HTML that this is something that I made myself, the class, so I'm gonna put a dot uh, in front of it. So if you just wanted to do H1 and you want to do, make all H1s a certain thing, then you can just do H1. 
Okay, any questions to this? I know I covered a lot of stuff here. Before we go to the next point here with JavaScript where we can put in the interactivity. Any things you're wondering about? Or anything you'd like me to show you how to do? Uh, if we're going to be doing this, uh, oh, what do you mean, uh, Kabir? So, uh, are we going to be doing something like this, um, making a website that's a, um, the thing? Uh, yes, this is the way to make a website. So this is what we're going to turn into this thing that we made here. Exactly. Okay. Yes. I'm just covering some uh, basic stuff for people who haven't seen HTML and CSS. So you feel like, you know, you are, you kind of know what's going on there. So does everyone here feel now that they kind of get the, um, uh, get the thing with HTML and CSS and how it works? Like the basics of it. Yeah, I think so. Okay. What about uh, the rest of you, Lily Jane, Luda, and Tara Dorix? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, please feel free to ask me any questions because I know it can be a little bit confusing in the beginning, but really all you need to know about is with index, or sorry, with HTML, it's all about different tags that you use. Now, one thing that I haven't told you guys is all the stuff that's happening here in the head tag. So all HTML documents are separated into two parts, the head and the body. The body is everything that you see on the web page right here. The head has different information about the website. Let me show you an example here. See up here, it says REPL.IT on the tab. I can change that by changing this thing. Let's do colors. Oops colors like that. Now, if I go here and refresh, you'll see that it changes this thing. So this stuff up here is more information like uh, that uh, kind of describes the website, you can say. So if you wanted to make your website searchable on Google, for example, uh, you can put stuff in here that would pop up on Google, for example, in the description. So those kind of things go up here. Whereas, you know, everything that you see on the website would go in here. Okay, so let's clean up our website a little bit. So I'm going to take away the image and the link. Like this. I'm also going to take away this. Also, let's take away this. And you know what? Let's also take away this. Let's refresh. And then there should be a blank website. Now I'm going to put in a button. Remember, we wanted a button in our Figma. So let's create a button tag like this. And in here, I'm going to just say click me for now. So let's see how that looks. Refresh. We got a button. Now, I am going to change the look of this button using the CSS knowledge that I have. So I'm going to give it a class. And I'm going to call it button so I can target it later on in my other, um, uh, you know, this one right here. So once that is done, let me go in here and let me get rid of this. And actually, you know, I'm also going to get rid of the body because I do want the uh, website to be white. So that's just the default value. So like that. Okay, so now we can do dot button. Okay, first of all, we want the button to have to have much bigger text. So let's do font size. And let's do 50 pixels. Let's see. Yes, much bigger. Now, let's see, what else do we have here? So we have the button in the center, which we can do later, but the button itself has a lot of like spacious, you know, it's very spacious in here. There's some space, which is referred to as padding. So I can add padding. So let's go in here and add padding. Oops. Let me add 50 pixels padding. Now you'll see that it's going to have all of this uh, space. Now, the, pa the way that padding works is that you can just put in one number and it's going to repeat it for all four sides as it did here. But if you really wanted it to be different, you know, different padding top and bottom, different padding left and right, you can do that too. 
So you can just separate that now into two numbers and you can say something like, give it 50 pixels top and bottom padding, but give it 100 pixels left and right padding. And now you have it like this. So now we're getting closer to what we wanted. What else do we have here? We have it a blue color. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna copy the color code on the right side here. I'm gonna copy that code. And then I'm gonna say background color and give it that hex code. And that, there we are. Okay, we're getting pretty close to it now. Now uh, I want the rounded corners, right? So I'm gonna go in here and do border radius and let's do 10 pixels I believe I did yep that was 10 refresh that oh okay nice now there's a little bit of if we zoom in you'll see that there's this border thing that's going on here which I don't really want at least not the way that it looks right now that's something that comes with a button just by default which you can remove if you want to so we can go into the border and then just say zero px. That would remove that thing and just create it a like, you know, borderless button. Now, remember in the very beginning, um, we wanted to create a little hover effect and we wanted it to be red, right? We can do that too. So for that, we're going to have to create a new one of these because it's a different state, right? The button looks a certain way when you don't hover over it and it can look a different way when you have the hover over state. So we got to explicitly give it that instruction now. So let's do button colon hover. And then in here, I can say a different background color. So let's do color and then let's just pick a color from here. Maybe crimson would look nice refresh and then we go like this see now you got a hover effect now one more thing is that if i hover over now it just looks like the the mouse looks the same right there's no kind of uh, this icon with the hand which again makes it easier for a person to see that this is indeed something that is clickable so i do want to add that too so of course i can do that with css i can say cursor pointer and now if I go in here, there you go. Now you got it um, pointed. Okay, so I'm pretty, oh, did it not refresh? There was a little bug there, okay. So now it's looking pretty good. And so I wanna, um, I wanna actually make it work. Now there is one more thing to it, right? We wanna put it right in the center. I'm gonna wait with it a little bit though, because I do wanna come to the JavaScript part of it first because I feel like that that's like the, really the meat of the video. And then we can use some more CSS to center it exactly on the center of the page a little bit later. So let's see how we can do that. Any questions, by the way, to this, everything that we've done now so far? How many pixels is like the whole uh, window? How many pixels is the whole window? Yeah. That's a very good question. Actually, uh, are why why are you asking that question? Because like uh, does it does it uh, vary from device to device? Uh, like if you have a I thought you might yes exactly that's a very good question, uh, Luda. Uh, yes, so the what you're asking is basically can we make our website in a way so that it looks good on all displays, right? Actually, I'm gonna to come to that at the end of the video. There is definitely a way for that. And we definitely do want to make this thing look good, both on mobile and on desktop and also on tablet. So the answer to that is that uh, when we're gonna put it in the center, uh, we're gonna make it so that it automatically uh, adjusts itself to the window size. It's gonna still be in the center if you make it smaller, like this, yeah. So that's gonna be a statement, right? That, that's gonna be a what? A statement. Yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be something called. Um, it's gonna be this dynamic thing in CSS that automatically like uh, understands what the height of your uh, height and width of your window is, and adjusts that according to that. There's, so there's a little bit of math involved there, but you won't have to do any math. There's like a standard way of doing that. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
So let's now go here and let's now try to make something interesting happen when we click this button. So remember now, guys, at this point, we've covered HTML, we've covered CSS. Both of those, using both of those things, we've been able to create this nice looking button that if you hover over, you get some new color. But if I click it, nothing is happening. And what I want to do is when I click it, we want to change the body background uh, color. So there's something that needs to be changed on the website. This is where JavaScript comes in. In fact, JavaScript was invented back in the 90s for this reason, because back then websites were really boring. All they did was display information, images, text, links, that kind of stuff. And so in the like mid to late 90s, there were uh, this company that came up with JavaScript as a way to be able to do that. So let me, before I write the code in there, let me show you a little bit. Let's go in, in deeper here. So is there anyone here who's tried developer tools on uh, Chrome? Like try to go into the code on a website? No? Well, let me show you how you can do that. So on Chrome, and on other, uh, a lot of other uh, browsers too, you can just right click and you can go into inspect element or just inspect. When you do that, it's gonna open up this whole thing of you know, a whole bunch of tools that you can use. Let me just show you um, one of those. So let me see here. Can everyone see what's going on on this side? Is the text too small? Let me make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So when you open it up, you're gonna see something like this. So now you'll see you're on the elements tab. And when you hover over different parts of the website, this is actually gonna give you the entire website that you coded. It's gonna, it's gonna give you where that thing is on the left side. So if you wanted to, you can go in here and you can change this click me to don't click me. And you press enter and actually changes the website. It's pretty cool. You know what? You can do it to any website in the world using developer tools. Now, does it mean if I change this here, does it mean that it changes for everyone in the world? What do you guys think? No, it's temporary. Exactly. It only is on your machine and it's only temporary. If I press refresh here, it's going to go back to how it was before. So this is mostly for a developer to be able to do some debugging and you know testing and learning, that kind of stuff. So let's go into console, the other one here. Now what we can do here is we can write some JavaScript code in here and we can make things happen on the website. So let me show you what we really wanna do. What we wanna do is when we click this button, we want the background to change to a different color from white. Before we can do that, we first need to get the entire uh, code for our website. And this is where it lives. There's a document object that if I press enter now, it's gonna give me this little thing. Control shift I, right? That's probably how you get uh, inspect element on your, on your machine. Uh, if you go here and you press this little thing, it's gonna give you the entire code for your website. That's really cool. Now it's gonna look a little tiny bit different like with just data stuff and all that. You don't need to worry about that. Basic idea is that is the same code that you coded in uh, on your uh, in, inside of your file. Now what I wanna do here is go inside of this body and change the style of that. So let me try this, document.body. Let's see what we get now. Now we only get this part. We only got this part by using this dot. Okay, let's keep going. Document body. Now I wanna do, okay, I got a whole bunch of like autocomplete stuff, so I can even go in here. What I wanna do is wanna do something to the style. Great, it has a style um, uh, attribute. Let me go in here and enter this. There's got a whole bunch of stuff that we can do to the style. And almost everything here, or if not everything, is just empty strings. These just, you know, empty, like nothing is in there. It's because it's all the default values, right? Like black for text and white for that, all those kind of things. But now I can do document.body.style.styleDefaultStyle. 
dot background color. Do they have that? Let's see. Oh, yes, they have it. Background color. Let me press enter on that. It is just some empty text, which means that it's just white. Let me go and write it again. By the way, if you're doing it on your machine, you don't actually need to write this thing every single time. If you've already written something that you want to use again, just press the up arrow and it's going to give you the latest thing. You can keep going like this as well. So let's go back and then let's say equals and then a number. Sorry, not a number, um, a color. So let's change this now to blue. And there we go. We change the color of the background to something else. And this is exactly what we want to do. So we kind of have the code for it already here. All we got to do now is make this thing happen, happen when we click this button. All right. So I'm going to leave this be right now because I do want to copy this code. But I'm going to, for now, go back to my code and then go back to my index and then show you guys how you can make something happen when you click a button. So the same way as before we were saying style equals something something to change that right here, we can also use on click here. And we can say that when you click this button, run some JavaScript. Let me show you the easiest JavaScript that you can run. It's a built in function that's called alert. And alert is one of those, you know, annoying pop ups that you get that you have to press OK on to remove. You can actually create that yourself by just using this. And inside of the brackets, you can put the messes that you want to show the people. So let's put in here and we got to use single quotes here. We should use single quotes because we already used double quotes. Let's just say, ha ha, for example. Now let's go back and refresh this thing. Now when we click, it gives you this pop up. Okay, so we're making something happen when we click it. Okay, fine. Now, let's go in here. Now, again, we don't want to keep writing JavaScript here, because again, it's going to be really messy. So I want to just be able to kind of connect this to the other JavaScript file we have and write the JavaScript there. So I'm going to the console uh, say that it was a violation to uh, click this? Yeah. Uh, -huh. uh well, let's see here. Violation click hand handler took uh, for what's happening here. That's a very good question. I'm not exactly sure why it's saying why a violation. I want to just say that it's just reporting how long time it took to execute. Oh. Yeah, I think that it's that. Um, so let's go here. And what we want to do in here is that we want to run some code, uh, some JavaScript code when we click it. So do you guys know functions from before? Do you guys remember uh, functions yeah, from other coding I, that you guys have done? I haven't, I haven't used it in JavaScript or HTML. Mm -hmm. well, I've used it in Scratch, I think. Yeah. Well, all a function is is just like a bunch of code. It could be just one line of code, could be five lines of code, could be 500 lines of code that you can just call something like a function called ch uh, color change that when you execute that function when you run that function something happens like for example changing the color of the website so that's what we're going to create we're going to create our own function that we're going to run so let's come up with the name of the function right now and again this is something completely up to you i'm going to call it change color like this one more thing with functions that you got to remember when you're writing a function, you have to have the brackets after it like this. There's several reasons for that. One is that way, you know, that is definitely a function. Another thing is also that not in this video, but in uh, in different functions, you can actually give it arguments. So you can actually feed information into the function. So it's going to do different things depending on different uh, inputs. More on that in, on a different uh, event and video. For now, we're just going to create this function. Now, this function doesn't exist right now. We got to write it. 
So we're going to go on the left side and open up our script.js file. I'm going to open it up right here like this. And in here, I'm going to say this function. And then it was what? Let's check what it was. Change color. Okay. Change color. And then again, we got to use curly brackets because we got to tell it now that anything that goes between the curly brackets is going to be inside of this function. Exactly the same as in CSS. You start a curly bracket, put the things in, and then cl close it. This is something you'll see in many different languages. Definitely true of JavaScript. Let's put it in here. Okay, so what is it that we want to do now? Well, we wanted to change the color of the background, right? That's exactly what we were able to do before. Now, this thing has gone away, but remember, you can just press the up arrow to get to the uh, previous uh, command that you ran. So I press up, it's gonna give me what it uh, uh, ran before. So I'm gonna just copy this code, copy, and put it right in here. Right, let's just do command B. And now it should work. So let's now refresh and let me get rid of this for now. Let's just do the website, click and blue. Now it works. Now, of course, it's not the exact blue that I want. I want this blue. So all I got to do then is go back here, get this blue, copy that, put it in here. You want to make sure that you put all of these things in quotation marks like this. So now let's try it one more time. Click and blue. There we go. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That's uh, the functionally the website is working. Now I'm going to show you how to center everything and all that. But uh, up until this point, is are there any questions? Is there anything that is unclear? We have now covered HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and made an interactive website. Everything was super clear. Yes. Okay, that is good. That's good. I'm glad. Are there anything that you're wondering about? Or are is there anything that you want me to show you how to do? Knowing these things? So um, these three things together make up something called front end coding. Basically, when you work with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you write all the code that people see in their browsers. And so if you wanted to look for a job or something like that, uh, then you would look for you know, a front end position or something like that at some, uh, at some company. And most of that job would involve writing uh, CSS and JavaScript. And as, as opposed to a backend position, which would mean um, code that is running on some server that is powering the website. So for example, if you wanted to uh, make a bigger website that like saves information to a database and you know does a whole bunch of different things and is a kind of a more complicated website, then it would require more than just being able to do things in the browser, but you can still do a lot of things just in the browser as we've been doing uh, in this, um, uh, you know, um, in this class. So let me show you at least one other thing that you're able to do here. So what if you wanted to make it so that it wouldn't just um, change the color to the same color every time, but you'd let the user decide which color they wanted to change it to. That's also possible. So let me show you something here. So if you go into the function, you can actually make a little variable. And variable, for those of you that haven't heard about it, is just a way to save some information that you can either change later or you can use later in a different way. So in order to make a variable, all you need to do is just write var. And then let's just call it uh, user color like this. 
And we're going to equal that to this inbuilt thing in JavaScript called prompt, which is an inbuilt function. And it's very much like the alert function where it gives you a pop up, but instead of just giving you a pop up with some text, it gives you the ability to actually write down something and kind of submit it. So this is a way to get user input. So in here, I'm going to write enter uh, a color. Once that is done, let's, let's try that now. Refresh, click, see, it gives you this pop up, enter a color. Okay, I'm going to write uh, red. Okay, well, it changed it to blue. How can I make it so that this code actually changes it to the color that the user put in? What do you guys think? Which part of the code do I need to change so that the color that I got from the user is the color that the background color changes to. So there are two things happening here. One is I'm getting the color from the user that is being saved inside of this variable called user color. So that's actually where it is saved. So I can just copy this. And instead of every single time changing it to the exact same color, I can just replace it with this user color. I think that should be able to work. Let's run that. Click. Now we can do orange. Changes it to orange. Let's refresh it again. Let's do click. Um, let's do crimson. Changes it to that. You get the idea. Pink. Changes it to pink. So this is now how you can get some data from the user and then you can change something on the website depending on that. Now, this is probably not the best way to do it though because um, getting some user input in this way using a pop-up is kind of annoying. So probably what you'd wanna do is put some sort of a text field that you can actually write something in and then press the button below it. Uh, there's also a way to do that, although I think we probably don't have enough time in this video for me to show that. Maybe towards the end I can do that. Okay, so any questions or anything you guys like me to show you before we go to the final thing, which is centering this thing into the center of the website? No? Okay. No. All right, so let's see now how we can center this. So I'm going to remove these tabs. And uh, uh, let's see, uh, by the way, just for those of you that are curious, I'm going to actually remove this now. And just change this again to how it was, because I didn't really want to use that. I was just for showing. Remember, there's a whole bunch of other things that you can change the style of too. So if you if you wanted to, you could also do background uh, image here and change it to this woody uh, image that we had here. That's possible. I believe the syntax for that is. Let me see if I can remember that. I think it's. Uh, I think I should look it up. Um, background image uh, JavaScript. What does syntax mean? What does syntax mean? So syntax means um, uh, the way that something is written. So I know what I want to do. Uh, I, I know that I want to change the background image of the background to show you guys, but I don't know exactly what am I supposed to put here? Am I just supposed to put woody, uh, woody.gif or am I supposed to put URL at woody.gif? What is it? So that would be syntax, exactly how something is written which is of course oh. important here uh, because otherwise it's not going to work. I think you need to define the folder or something. Yeah, well, uh, in this case is just this one. It's uh, oh. It looks like it's just this. So we can copy this and we can put it in here like this and we can change it to exactly the one that we have, which is woody.gif. Let's see if that works. So now refresh and I click 
And now we got this uh, woody background uh, going on here. And of course, if you wanted to, if you didn't want it to repeat like this, you could also put some code in there that would make it so that it's like a large image that covers the entire thing. But here you go. If you want to do something more complicated than that, image is also possible. Let's go back to image color. There we go. So now I want to be able to center this thing. So again, I might not be exactly sure how to do this. I'm going to use Google to search this again. How to center uh, in HTML. Let's see. So in here, I got W3Schools, which is a great resource um, to use. I'm going to go here. CSS layout, horizontal and vertical align, okay? Let me see if I have something here that I want to use. So they're showing me how to align text, which is this. I have a button, which is not text. So image, okay. Left and right align using position, okay. Using float. Let me look for some more things. Uh, line height, uh, center vertically using Flexbox. Okay, this sounds interesting. You can use Flexbox to center things. Just note that Flexbox is not supported. Okay, that should be fine. Maybe I can I can try this one. So here, what it gives you is a CSS class called Center. So I'm going to copy this thing. Now I can also try it yourself here to see the full code. And so here it gives me that this part is centered. So if you can see here, in order to center this thing, I need to have some sort of a tag that I can put everything inside of which I wanna center. For that, in HTML, there's something called a div tag, which is short for divider. But it's basically anything that you want to put into one thing, you can use a div for. So divs are used a lot, and you'll get more practice as you, more you use it. But for now, let's just go back here and copy this code. And then first, let's put it into our CSS file below button. So we got center and we got all of these things which we think is going to align it to the center. Now let's go into index and we have just a button here. Now let's go in here and write a little div and we're gonna put this thing button inside of that div. And here I'm gonna give it the class of center. Now let's see how that looks. A refresh. Oh, okay. It's kind of centered, it's, it's centered this way, but it's not centered this way. This is where we come back to that thing that you asked uh, Luda about uh, the windows. Because now we can go in here and into the CSS. And here you can see that there are five different things that are being applied. It's the display, which is using flex. Uh, which means that it's like this new, um, it's this thing called Flexbox, which being which is being exp um, applied in this case to this div. And then it's using some other things that are centering it. So I, I definitely don't want to touch any of this. But the border here, I'm pretty sure that this green is referring to this border around the thing. That's pretty cool because now I'll be able to use that to test this thing. And once I've tested it and it fully works, I can just remove that border. So I'm, I don't want to touch that either just yet. And then there's the height thing and it says 200 pixels. Let me change that to 500 pixels. Now, of course, it's going to center it between that. So this is where we come back to that thing where we don't want it to be 500 pixels, 200 pixels because 200 pixels might look good on one display but horrible on a different. We want it to be whatever it needs to be so that it's gonna look good on any display. A humongous 4K uh, television display and just a small iPhone you know, display as well. So we can go in here and we can use something called 100 VH. And let me show you what it does. 
we refresh now, it made it as the, the same height as the window. Now, it's not exactly the same height. It's, it's a little bit too much, see, because there's a little scroll window. So we can we can adjust that. But otherwise, it's pretty good. Now, if we go and we make this window smaller, see how this changes with the window. So this is now fully responsive as well. So now let's see how we can change this thing. We can do it in different ways. One way of doing it is just putting down this number to something smaller like 95. Now if we do, now there's no scrolling, but that might be a little bit too much. So let me maybe do 96. Yeah, see, now there's no scrolling. The border is around it, it's centered. Now we can just get rid of this part. And there you have it. It's exactly in the center and it works fully responsive. So there we have this thing. Now we can go back and of course we can change this thing to blue because that's what we wanted from our Figma sketch. There we are. Okay, so we got a couple minutes left, nine minutes left. Any questions that you guys have or anything that you want me to show you? So um, for those of you that had never seen HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, what did you guys think? Was it, um, was it easier or harder than you th thought uh, to make a website like this? Harder, a little bit. A little bit harder? Mm -hmm. What about uh, you, Kabir? It's a bit hard. Yeah. I think part of the reason why it looks very hard is because there's so many things that you haven't seen before. So there's a lot of like, you know, um, new kind of text. So um, when you get the video for this thing on YouTube, then uh, if you're interested, just go through it again, really, really slow and take as much time as you need. And I'm sure that um, after having done it, you know, once or twice, it's going to make um, a lot of sense to you. Okay, now one last thing that I'll show you guys here is um, if you wanted to make it, if you wanted to make it more, uh, more buttons, let's say, check this out. So you could literally just copy this part, the buttons, and you could just paste two more underneath it. And it would be just put up next to each other. The reason for that is because we're using this flex box right here. And so if you wanted these buttons to have a little bit of space between them as well, you could go in here and you can say margin. Margin is basically a space bit outside while padding is the space inside. So here you can say something like 20 pixels. So that's going to separate it a little bit like that. And then you can go in here and you can say, let's do uh, red, green, and blue, like this. That, oops, BL, blue, there you go. So now that changes those things. Now, of course, you want it to be a different color for these two buttons. So there's one thing called classes in HTML, but there's another thing called IDs. And let me show you how that works. So if you went in here and you said ID and you said blue, then you went in here and you said uh, green. And then let's do uh, blue, or sorry, red here. And IDs are different from classes because IDs can only be used once, where classes can be used as many times as you want. So what we can do here is we can go in here and we can make a button class that is used on all th uh, three buttons. But on top of that, we can say this. For IDs, we have to use a hashtag, not a dot. So let's do blue. And then let's give it the same background color as this one. And then let's do 
uh, red and green. See if I can do it in last five minutes, green. So let's now go to color picker. Oh, color picker. Let's get a nice red color. Let's spread it like this maybe. And we'll do uh, red. And let's do a nice green color using maybe this one. Copy that, put it in here. There we go. So those are now different colors. And now we can do, uh, we of course we click them, it's the same code, right? So we gotta go back to the JavaScript. And in here, we could change this thing and now we can actually use the argument in here. So we can say, again, this is getting a little bit complicated. Now I'm going pretty fast. Don't worry about if you're not following everything, you'll be able to see it again in the video. But what I'm gonna be doing in here is that when you run this function, you can actually put in a color, which you can then use in here. So what that means is when I, when I click the button here for red, green, and blue, inside of this function, I can give it these codes, the color codes, so it just uses that directly into the function. So let's do this for green, uh, blue, uh, sorry, red. So red is going to be this one. Red and then uh, blue here and then green here. There you go. And now let's refresh. Let's see red, green and blue. And there you have it. Um, one, uh, another, I got another three. Uh, this video will be on YouTube. Yes, Kabir, absolutely. After uh, this uh, thing is over, I'm gonna be uploading it to YouTube and then we'll send you the link through email so you can watch it later yourself to go through this uh, and you can build it yourself. Um, so one thing that might be nice is if you hover over these buttons, it's kind of nice to have that hover effect where it goes a little bit larger, you know, that animation. Turns out there's a fairly easy way to do that. So let's do that now. So um, let's see here, uh, CSS, uh, button, hover, uh, scale. I'll write scale. There we go, scale on hover with transition. So we got some code here, it's giving me two different ones, one for the regular one and then when it's hovering over. Let me copy this part, because it's CSS, right? Let me go here, and then we'll go into the button class, we'll put in here that there should be a transition. Don't worry too much about if you're not understanding what's going on here, all it's doing is it's, it's giving a little bit an animation effect. And what we want to do is when you hover over the button, it's just going to scale it up by a little bit. So let's do under hover. Let's not do a background color. Let's take away this. And let's just do scale 1.1. 1.1 means that it's going to grow it by 10%. Let's refresh now. And now when you hover over, see, there's a little hover effect that you can see. Okay, that is it, guys. Uh, one minute left. Uh, thank you so much for joining and thank you so much for watching this uh, on YouTube or wherever else you're watching this. I really hope that you enjoyed building this with me. If you have any questions, please, um, please put it in the comments below. Also, if you liked this video, please like and also subscribe to our channel, Curly Brackets. We do um, these events uh, every month here. So thank you so much for joining.